Kia ora guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Max, I'm the host here at The Black Jersey and today's video, it's sponsored to you guys by Rugby News Magazine. A big thank you to my patrons as per normal as well and I'll also just remind you guys to subscribe to me and like this video if you enjoy my content. Today is part two of my series about what Scott Robertson's All Blacks could potentially look like in 2024 when he takes over from the Crusaders and goes into being the All Blacks head coach. Um, this is also assuming he's going to select a 33 man squad and is also assuming that every player on this list is available and have not been injured or are signed for an overseas team. So um, without further ado I'm going to go over to the halfbacks. So Falau Fakatava I think will become the first choice halfback once Aaron Smith, TJ Pedinara and Brad Webber are all gone. While a lot of people are very hyped about Cam Royguard right now, um, Royguard's just simply having a lot of good form right now whereas Fakatava has just been building momentum, momentum and and momentum and all we're seeing right now here in 2023 is the symptoms of a guy that's been a bit uh, short of game time due to injury recently and I think he's going to come fine in time for when Razor takes over. Fakatava was the first Hawks Bay player to win the Dwayne Monkley medal back in 2020 playing halfback for them and uh, man he's just a once in a generation talent I do truly believe that his running game is absolutely ridiculous he's far calmer than most halfbacks with his decision making and he's got a great pass on him of course he does. He's also a pretty uh, muscular guy for a dude that's not too large. Anyway, we do need to move over to Cam Royguard himself. He is going to become one heck of an impact player, I do believe. Um, the Hurricanes, because they seem to have this love affair with TJ Pedinara, I do think they will start starting Pedinara once he's injury free again. And that Royguard is going to start really developing that running game to the next level and become a world class finisher off the bench. I'll get on to why I think more of that later on though because we do have to touch on um, another uncapped option who I also think could get a few test caps before the inevitable arrival of Noah Hotham. That is Koites Ratama. Um, Hotham's still going to be 20 years old when Razor takes over so I don't think he's going to be ready yet. Ratama on the other hand has moved up from third choice to second choice over at the Chiefs and he's playing decently well whenever he does get onto the park and get some minutes. With Xavier Rowe having a tough time he's going to miss the whole of 2023. Um, Ratama I do think is going to elevate himself up to the Chiefs first choice option and with Brad Webber very likely to get out of there and go overseas um, I do think Ratama is going to take his chances he'll be 23 years old when Razor takes over and um, he's also got a fair bit of muscle on him for a guy that's just 87 kgs um, he would be a great guy to have in the wider training squad I do believe that anyway over to 10 I think Damian McKenzie is possibly going to re-sign with the NZR he's got a real extended run in the 10 jersey for the Chiefs right now and um, I do believe that Ian Foster just kept him in the All Blacks 15 to continue that need for game time so he can be the third choice 10. He will get picked for the All Blacks this year for the 2023 World Cup and um, because Bowden Barrett and Richie Mwonga won't be available for selection, I think that Rays is going to just play it safe, pick the guy that's experienced before eventually phasing out this 40 test veteran for Aidan Morgan and Fergus Burke. Aidan Morgan, I do believe the future of the All Blacks number 10 jersey has to go to him. He'll be 22 years old once Razor takes over as the coach and um, he's not like the biggest guy or anything but he truly does remind me of like a Richie Mwong at 2.0. I'd almost think of Morgan as the Kiwi answer to Marcus Smith. He's got excellent game management. He's not actually an awful tackler for a small guy whereas um, goal kicking isn't an issue with Jordy Barrett still around. Morgan is just one heck of a talent as well and so hopefully he can get a good go. Fergus Burke though I do think is going to get a bit more favoritism from Razor as Burke currently plays at the Crusaders. I think we're most likely to see Burke slot in off the bench from Jersey 22 as he's also having an extended run at fullback here in 2023. Burke's going to be a pretty decent age to make his test debut at 24 years old as well and he's not exactly um, the smallest guy either but has a real fearlessness about the way he plays the game and I think that I would trust him very much to make a lot of nice kicks from deep as well. Now that we've discussed the halves I do have to discuss Rugby News Magazine. So this is my favourite magazine produced here in New Zealand. It's the most read and I've read it since 2016. Regular contributors include Kieran Reid, Kendra Coxedge and Adam Julian. I respect them all very much. You'll also catch Ian Jones in here very regularly and um, it's just a great place for insightful content written by people who are respected in their game. You guys know that I'm a huge 
promoter of independent media. I think it's really important to get true grassroots voice, voices a platform, and this is a great place for said people to do that. Players who were um, professionals once upon a time, this is an excellent outlet for them to share their thoughts on how the game is right now, especially with Kieran Reid's take on the Six Nations. There's also a lot of other good stuff about schoolboy rugby and club rugby that I think is instrumental to keeping the health of New Zealand rugby going in the modern era. If I ever see something about club rugby here in Hawke's Bay, here in the magazine, you guys know I'm going to be reading about it that whole day, see what's going on, keep up with old teams I used to play against, things like that. Remember to visit the link in the pinned comments rugby news magazine to read this excellent issue my favorite article this week was the one about razor of course now back to the main video we'll now discuss the midfielders and i'm sorry to david havili's haters but he's vice captain at the crusaders right now and so don't be surprised to see him accumulate his 50th test while razor's running the show havili's re-signed through to 2025 and he'll be 29 years old when razor takes over so he'll still be young enough to get a second world cup under his belt uh, the guy's bulked up from 88 kgs to 96 in the last 18 months or so and um, he truly is starting to look like the biggest guy in that midfield with Tupaya and Tui Vasashek, the other options for Ian Foster. Havili's kicking game cannot be underestimated while his versatility is going to make him an absolute weapon off the bench. However, with this being the start of the new World Cup cycle, I do think Razor will elevate Jordy Barrett to the 12 jersey and bring Havili off the bench in jersey 20. Barrett was a um, first choice 12 for Robertson back when he played for Canterbury in 2016 before he shifted to the Hurricanes in Taranaki. Geordie's um, starting to look a bit more muscular and though I believe he's far better at fullback, he's definitely looking to just get more longevity out of his career having re-signed over to 2025. The fact that he may get a sabbatical though as he'll reach his 50th test in 2023 is going to be quite important for keeping Havili around. Barrett's also going to be 27 when Razor takes over so that's a really decent age to get a midfield pairing especially when you consider Riku Ioane the guy he'll inevitably get paired with is the same age. Ioane has recently re-signed to 2027 that was one of the things I missed in the article that this YouTube video is based on. Getting Ioane's signature was so important for the All Blacks and though he will have a sabbatical in 2025 it's better to have him just go off to France and never come back again. Um, if anyone's going to beat Doug Howlett's record for the most tries scored by an All Black it is going to be Rico Ioane. I've continued to say that. To round out the midfield, I think Quintu Pai is going to start getting a bit more game time at 13. Anton Leonard Brown's starting to get a bit older, so I think Rameka Poihipi is going to continue keeping himself in the 12 jersey for the Chiefs. Tupai began his career as a 13, but was a little bit more comfortable at 12 when he initially made his debut at Super Rugby level while he started at 12 in his All Blacks debut against Tonga. He's played 14 tests and he's going to miss the 2023 World Cup due to an ACL injury, but it's okay. This year he will be able to play for Waikato in the NPC while his teammates are at the World Cup. Then in 2024, I cannot wait to see him come back 24 years old with a chip on his shoulder, ready to just get stuck in. At 97 kgs as well, um, he could definitely bulk up a little bit more because that would make him just a true utility value, able to cover flanker, winger, and centre. He actually played a few minutes at flanker against South Africa at Ellis Park Stadium in 2022. Really hoping Tupai can get back to his best. If he does, Razor is definitely going to pick him to get that a bit of cohesion there, sorry, with um, Havili at 12, Tupai at 13, as they've been playing with each other for a wee while, having been teammates for the All Blacks back in 2021. We now have to get to the um, outside backs there, sorry. Jacob Bratumatavuki Neepkins is a guy who was destined to be an All Black. Um, he didn't make his All Blacks debut as early as I suspected he was, but by the time that 2024 comes around, I do think as a power winger, Caleb Clark is going to start getting a little bit slower, so that will open the door for this guy. AJ Lamb's also starting to get a bit older. Outside backs truly do have a limited time frame to make their test debut, so I think Ratu Maitavuki Neepkins and the fact that he can cover fullback is going to make him a bit of a safer bet. He'll be a bit of a lighter winger in comparison to the next one though, Leicester Fyinga Anuku. If there's one thing we can guarantee about Scott Robertson, 
Robertson's Orblex, it's that Fyanga Anuku will start at the left wing and also provide the possible ability to be that fifth midfielder if worst comes to worst. He's 109 kgs, but actually can kick and actually can turn around to defend quick enough. The guy's um, just got a real um, venomous way that he carries, and I love watching it. His test debut, it was not fancy. Neither was his second test when he got yellow carded against Ireland, but I do think after learning from that initial experience, he is going to bounce back and maybe the fact that he can play two positions could see him last all the way to 2027 when he's going to be 28 years old. Um, fingers crossed that can happen. I do think Mark Talia will stick around for a little bit longer before getting phased out of the team for someone like Maka Springer. Um, Talia has been in incredible form right now and wingers typically have about three or so years at their peak. So 2022, 2023 and 2024. That sounds about right for Talia who's going to be 27 when Ray it takes charge. Um, the Blues do have a lot of flair, so it would be definitely well reflected if Talia was to continue covering that right wing. And the most important thing I think we'll take away from this video is the fact that Will Jordan will play fullback under Scott Robertson. 26 years old is a decent age to become a key decision maker for the team, and he's played 21 tests. He is going to be coming back for the 2023 Rugby World Cup from injury, and he's of course a try scoring machine. Although that try scoring rate is slowing down, he is getting better on defense and he is developing more as a kicker so Jordan playing at 15 for Razor with Burke off the bench well that's his Crusaders cohesion and Ruben Love is almost definitely going to join the picture later on um, Ruben Love though he just has to um, I guess recover get things in order maybe he's going to be the guy that ends up replacing Damian McKenzie who knows I'm just going to end the video here though because I want to let you guys speculate down below and everything like that you can also support me over on Instagram Twitter, my PayPal tip jar, or you can become one of my patrons. Don't forget to um, subscribe to the Rugby News Magazine as well. They do 10 issues a year and they're a quality read. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I'm going to end it here. Cheers from Max.